Zan, we've got a beat on a couple of these lines, this on net profit and also on revenue. So starting with the first quarter, net profit 4.4 billion euros, a tad above the 4.3 that analysts had penciled in. In terms of the revenue, 12.03 billion, again, slightly above the 11.98 that analysts had seen. In terms of the CET1 ratio, that stands at 13.6% at the end of the first quarter. Uh, first quarter liquidity coverage ratio 139 percent now these numbers today are profit more than doubling effectively in that first quarter this has been bolstered by a one-off here the sale of the u.s retail division and it's just worth pointing out the securities trading that revenue edged down 1.8 percent but that was certainly better than what we saw at some of the other major banks where it's been a pretty difficult period of trading for some of the peers well charlotte has more and charlotte does uh, similar questions to you where we are very much watching all the commentary on liquidity positions, how banks like this are faring, when we've got other regional banks, in some cases global banks, under pressure in recent weeks. How do you think BNP has managed to ride the wave? Yeah, well, as you're saying, the numbers are a little bit better than expected there for BNP Paribas, <clears throat> quite solid. The distributor net income at 2.8 uh, billion. You say uh, the, the overall number boosted by the, the, the sale of the US unit Bank of Wales that they finalized just in February for $16 billion. But looking at the different parts of the business, the commercial and personal banking part of the business that has their, their retail business, particularly in France, they're quite resilient with revenue up almost 6% in that part of the business. CIB up 4%. You, you gave a little bit of the detail there. Uh, FIC up 9% and equities are 19%. So similar picture to what we've seen in previous quarters and also in other uh, banks. But there, uh, again, all resilient operating expenses, of course, higher, uh, higher costs there, but still an underlying positive jaws effect. Cost of risk down 1.4%. So 28 basis point CT ratio, 13.6%. Th so all of all, uh, quite resilient set of numbers there for BNP Paribas. And I had a chance to catch up with the CFO of the bank and we discuss about the results of the bank. Indeed, very solid Q1 results, which basically formed the bedrock of BNP Paribas' ambitious growth trajectories. And basically on all lines, even you mentioned revenues, but intrinsic revenues were up by 5.3%. A company in cost, excluding in particular IFRIC taxes, lead to positive jaws effects of 1.5 points. And as you know, the group has a solid balance sheet, Cost of risk remains low at 28 basis points over outstanding. Common equity T1 stood at 13.6%. And as announced in February, we introduce income labeled distributable, representing our intrinsic performance and forming the basis going forward. All figured mentions are in this concept. Hence, a bottom line clocking in at 2.8 billion euros and an earnings per share of 2.19 euros, an 18 1.8% annualized growth rate. Basically, it is the performance of our businesses generating this strong intrinsic growth. Growth up 4% at CPBS, at CIB, sorry, and CPBS 6%, and IPS 0.6%. And all this leads to the 5%, 5.3% growth of the group I mentioned earlier. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the strength of the delivery at BNP Paribas. So you just mentioned the performance of your different divisions. So let's try to drill in a little bit into that. So uh, particularly, we look at your commercial and personal banking and services. I think from analysts we're expecting in this quarter that strong non-French net interest income would help offset some weaker ones, some from the weaker French retail net interest income. But it looks like they were both quite resilient. Yes, indeed. Let's not forget. I mean, if you look at CPBS, so our commercial and personal private banking services, they are really serving our clients with a diverse set of products. And if you look at it, you really saw a very strong commercial momentum, a good momentum for the commercial banks and strong performance of the specialized businesses, in particular if you take Arval or Carfleet leasing. But not only that, also look at the steep increase in client acquisition in our new activities, like Hello Bank, up 39%, or Nickel, up 26%. So that is why, all in all, the CPBS had a very strong performance with 6% revenue uptick. Uh, looking at CIBC revenue up 4%, so again, we're still FIC performing well, of course, high interest rate there up 9%, and equities down 19.5%. Again, similar picture to what we've seen in previous quarters. Does you see these similar trends to continue for the rest of this year? Listen, our, our main impact is that we have now the full set of services in CIB, and we are there to serve clients. 
We are solid like uh, basically no one else. And so we are there to serve. And therefore, we are present. And therefore, you see the pickup that you have seen in CIB overall. And so we are there to continue to serve and continue to have our market share stepping up. And that was Lars Machinil, the CFO of BNP Paribas. So the bank also reconfirmed some of the targets that they'd given in February, including expecting net income to grow by more than 9% per year uh, to 25. It was 7% previously. And a return of tangible equity above 12% by 25. Again, some of those targets they've given in February already reconfirming. And we also talked about, uh, of course, the situation that banks have been going through over the past couple of months. And uh, he said there were no systemic risk in Europe for European banks. We'll talk about the French economy after that. Fitch downgrade, so we'll bring you more of this interview in the next hour.